You're watching Ned the Dead and Doc Moreau. Check out their stuff at nedthedead.com. Welcome to Chiller Theater. Sorry, Ned the Dead. Dr. Moreau, featuring teenagers from outer space. Ladies and gentlemen, Ned the Dead. Hey everybody, this is Chiller Theater, and now I'll mark that occasion by going Barbie, 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 That is what happens when you have pent up sense of I just had a lot of meh in me. And occasionally, if I don't let it out meh, if it doesn't come out that way, it comes out other ways, and it just it doesn't play that well in my life. So that, for you, was my meh. And again, comes out with me. Burr, burr, burr. Try it yourself at home. It really, really works. Now, friends, Chiller Theater tonight, we've got the horrible teenagers from outer space. Actually, we're on a huge roll, and these movies have been really, really good. This week, another awesome flick. I mean, it's just great stuff that happens in here. And to give you the sense of what this movie's all about, to tell you the truth, to give you the facts about the movie, it's Doc Moreau with Doc Moreau's movie lore. Roll it, Doc. Ugh, what? Teenagers from Outer Space is a nutty, no-budget sci-fi epic made by Tom Graff, a young filmmaker in the classic Ed Wood Jr. mold. He wrote, produced, directed, and even plays the part of Joe the Reporter. According to movie lore, Graff was romantically involved with star David Love. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And created Teenagers from Outer Space as a vehicle to showcase Love's talents. So ponder this, would Tom Graff's creative efforts have been more successful had he not been enamored with his star? Eh, probably not. But the rumored relationship was the inspiration for an episode of the animated series Mission Hill, entitled, I Married a Gay Man from Outer Space. And speaking of Edward Jr., Harvey B. Dunn, who plays the nap-happy Gramps, also appeared in two of Wood's classics, Bride of the Monster with Bella Lugosi and Night of the Ghouls. The captain of the alien spaceship? That's King Moody, who has a couple of other footnotes in pop culture. He was one of the original Ronald McDonald's and showed up in several episodes of Get Smart as chaos henchman Starker. The soundtrack may seem odd and peculiar, here's why. Tom Graff pre-recorded it, then had the actors lip sync to their own voices. Eh. Other Graff innovations? The focusing disintegrator ray gun is a Hubley's toy cap gun with a mirror glued on the nozzle reflecting light back at the camera. The alien astro boots are actually dress shoes with white socks pulled over them. And their astro suits are adorned with strips of duct tape. Brilliant. You've been lured, people. Ned. Hey everybody, there it is, Doc Moreau's movie lore. Every single week, week. <laughs> whoa, that was Freudian, wasn't it? Every week here, I go away, you're not, I didn't mean it meanly. Every, oh yeah, his stuff, every week on this show, very good, very nice. Go to the movie now, or what? Dr. Mason, Dr. Mason. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I guess it was nothing. A sudden light reflection, it startled me. There's no doubt a comet or a meteor. No, it, it seemed to be a, a drill-shaped thing, revolving. I know, it, it must have been my imagination, but it makes me realize how desperately alone the Earth is. Hanging in space like a speck of food floating in the ocean. Sooner or later to be swallowed up by some creature floating by. Oh, come now. 
You've been at the wacky tabacky again, haven't you, my boy? No more waking and bacon for you, my friend. <laughs> Time will tell, Dr. Mason. We can only wait and wonder. Wonder how. Wonder when. Just like the stoner said, a drill-shaped thing, revolving, screwing, boring. <laughs> it's boring, all right. <laughs> Did he just taste the earth? You suppose it tasted better in the 50s? Hmm, needs more carbon. Preliminary findings. Thor reporting. 42 saturation degrees in 96 volumes. Intermediate fluctuation in Marfan content. Derek reporting. Tridex mixer components ratio exceeding 7 to 1.4. Moral reporting. Diagonal adjustment reading resisting structural forms by 2.8.0 vernums. Saul reporting. Uneven cartoid levels intersect planes below 0.03. Surface readings register above minimum requirements. Morrow, go below and bring up the young Gargan specimen. 
Now the decision depends on its reactions. Wait, Captain. I have found evidence of intelligent beings on this planet. Of what concern are foreign beings? Of none to you, Thor. Just as you were so unconcerned when you destroyed the small creature. So bravely. It was no more than an insect. But it had life. And that life you had to take to satisfy your endless hunger for killing. Silence, both of you. Proceed, bring the Gargan. That will not be necessary, Captain. Conditions here will be reported as unsatisfactory, as they were on the other planets we have charted. By what authority? You will prepare for takeoff. The ship will leave this planet immediately. According to our code of operations... You may forget the code of operations, Captain. Only civilized beings could have made the inscription on this metal piece. We shall not have the thousands of Gargans brought here to destroy them. You have concern for foreign beings over our mission to locate grazing land for our Gargan herds? Recall, it is necessary as a reserve food supply for our people. Our people? We live like parts of a machine. We don't know our fathers or mothers were raised in cubicles. The sick and the old are put to death. It is the one and only way to maintain the supreme race. Have you forgotten it? Our people have forgotten. They have been made to forget for centuries. But I have learned how it once was. Families, brothers and sisters, there was happiness, there was love. Of oh, what do you speak? From where have you learned such things? I have read. I have read from this book. I discovered it and kept it hidden. Somehow it survived the flames of the Annihilators when our people were turned into mechanized slaves centuries ago. When we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. Now I know these aliens, they're Guantanamites from the Cheney Galaxy. Hey Doc, no politicizing. I may well sentence you to wedgies performed by someone else. <laughs> And death for this treason. The High Court may judge me after we have accomplished our mission. We will find an uninhabited planet to which the herds of Gargans may be shipped without endangering civilized beings. Let me see that book. I am interested to see what sways your mind so heavily. You may have it. the Gargan. You were a fool, Derek. This book has poisoned your mind and you shall suffer for it. Captain, if the Gargans are shipped here, the inhabitants may destroy them. That possibility alone makes it worthwhile to locate an uninhabited planet. That book has indeed made you forget many things. We are the supreme race. We have the supreme weapons. We use duct tape on our astro suits. Shut up, man. This guy's the captain. That's why his astro suit's got two rows of duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> Keep him under guard, Thor. I will study the reactions of the young Gargan. Before the High Court has you executed, you should be made to watch what happens when we return here with the Gargans. By the elements alone, they will grow to millions of times their original size in less time than it takes for the sun to rise and fall. It thrives, Captain. Already I can feel it has grown heavier. We shall return to our base and leave the transport ships here. Soon, this planet will be covered with full-grown Gargans. A safe distance from our planet, yet their meat will be available to us for the harvesting. Repack the instruments. I shall radio back the news of our success. Captain! Captain, something has gone wrong. Look here. What? What has happened? I do not know. It suddenly fell limp, and now does not move. Assemble the TRS, is hook in the gas grating instruments. And bring some of my little blue pills. Be quick!
the atmosphere here tested above minimum, but the gargan species cannot live due to excessive nitrogenic gas compounds emitted in our preliminary diagnosis. Ned, once again you have saved the Earth. You and your excessive nitrogenic gas compound emissions. <laughs> Then this planet will be reported as unsuitable. Repack the instruments and prepare for takeoff. We will continue our search in another solar system. And when we return to our home base, you will be presented to the High Court with the evidence against you. Thor, Saul, bind the prisoner and prepare him for the isolation chamber. I will make contact with base. Expedition Z06 to base. Expedition Z06 to base. Guard him. I will get the straps. Yeah, Thor struck me as a guy who was in the straps. Thor's a jerk. <laughs> Lie down. Put your hands behind you. from Saul. I could have stopped him. Derek is to be brought back alive. He is the son of our leader. Derek? I reported his actions and was connected with the leader himself. He told me this. He said Derek does not know. As the son of our leader, the High Court will pardon him. He will be pardoned. When the sky is light, we will begin to search for him. Captain, look at this. The Gargan. It is not dead. It has revived. It flourishes. The excessive nitrogenic gas compound shocked its system. Now it thrives on the very same compounds. Then this planet is suitable. Completely. Oh, okay, Ned, you can stop with the excessive gas emissions. I can't. Dance with me, I want to be your partner, can't you see? The music caresses you and makes me feel like... Sorry about that. <laughs> you know, when men do that, and you know, and uh, what? What is dance? What are you doing you up there? Pirouette. Oh, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> that deal? Is that what you were looking to do? Mm. No, I'm actually coiled in mic cord. <laughs> you know what happens here, friends, is that... That was my plan. Oh, that, yeah. oh that's not mic cord. <laughs> ah, oh, that, uh, yeah, that was your plan. <laughs> you know... Dude, I can only imagine what your Mad life... Mad scientist, hello. Do you folks ever think, you know, look in here and think, what would it be like to be one of those guys? Because if you do, I think the more fun would be would be to be Doc Moreau, who has kind of... I mean, my life is... You can pretty much imagine what my life is like. I mean, I'm a fat little man who talks too much and says inappropriate things at inappropriate times. You know, sometimes fun to be with, probably sometimes drive you crazy. Now, Doc Moreau, on the other hand, quiet waters run deep. And he has very strange life, I believe. Do you have a strange life? And I mean it in a nice way. Do you have a strange mm. life, do you think? Mm. Do you think? Yes. <laughs> well, I, yeah, in between my favorite shows. Right. I when there's time. Find, when, yeah, when there's time to have a life. life. No, I think it's, it's definitely strange. Speaking of strange, everybody, we've got teenagers from outer space, right? Oh. It has been good and will continue to be good. Or what? You're watching Ned the Dead's Chiller Theater. We'll be right back.
if you love almonds. Almonds? Yeah. Really love almonds. I do. I do. I do. You'll love the Mars Almond Bar. So many almonds, you get an almond in every bite. An almond in every bite. Right. Yeah. Plus real milk chocolate. So get an almond in every bite. Mars Almond Bar. And now Mars Sprint Bar and Mars Crunchy Chocolate Bar. The best chocolate on Earth comes from Mars. Welcome back to Chiller Theater. Hey everybody, it's Chiller Theater. Welcome, friends. Oh, look at that. I know. I know, man. I know you fry the darn pooch. Sparky! <laughs> I'll tell you what. You know, friends, this thing is so neat. It is just such a cool. Did you smell the head? Just now, did you do that? Well, I wanted to make sure he, you know, cooled off. <laughs> he was cooled off from what? Too soon to pick oh, him up. Oh, from, from his actually his frying. I thought from you having him having you in his gym shorts or whatever. <laughs> That's right. That's why he sniffs him. He actually keeps this in his gym shorts. Sparky. Look at this thing. This is, you know, this feels almost truly bone-like. Do you know what I mean? I mean, this is that real? It's, it's quite an artifact. Do you feel that this is Look real? That. Well, is that real? Sparky. No, is is this actually a fur bearing creature? No, but this feels minutes it, before. I don't know, my friend. Here, hold on. Oh. I don't want to wreck it. Let's mm. have it. Maybe it can do the horrible fandango. <laughs> that is the fun we have as we do these things. <laughs> la 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 la. Oh. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, just turned 40. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> here we go. Oh. Time for your checkup, young man. <laughs> what is that all Careful about? Careful there. Hey, sorry. Oh, let's you're, get it back uh, that way. You're distressing uh, his toxics. I know. I didn't. <laughs> hey, hello, everybody. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You know, it's so sad. I am as old as I am, and I still have this thing. I go back to being 12 years old, mighty darn fat. Yeah. Well, look what he sits and just enjoys. Enjoys some quality time here on, yeah. the old, uh, on the old show. You know what I mean? Look at him. Look, he looks like that. He is a very unusual creature. All right, everybody, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go off and watch things that are television-like. Eventually, you'll come back, and we'll share more of the glory that brings you here each and every week. Or what? Kid, uh, nice wife beater shirt you're wearing there. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Can I help you, sir? Yes, I would. Would you tell me the meaning of the inscription on this metal piece? Sparky. Sparky? Your name was Sparky? Don't worry, kids. No animals were demolecularized for the filming of this show. <laughs> Twelve forty-three Willowcrest Drive. That's just three blocks down there and a few doors up. You can't miss it. Hey, what's what you're doing now? Hey, boy, you spilled point oh two five cents of gas there, boy. <laughs> hey, boy. No, I'm I'm sorry. I was just trying to make out what kind of clothes that guy was wearing. Looks like some kind of military uniform. Wonder where he's from. Could be from Mars, Paul. I care. Hurry up that boy, will you? I haven't got all day. Hop in. I'll give you a lift. Lift. Well, it's a long way into town. Okay, it's all right with me. If wait. Never saw a uniform like that before. What brings you here? I am searching for someone. Maybe I can help you. 
Know a lot of folks around these parts. I am searching for someone you could not know. breakfast out 20 minutes ago, Grandpa, and it's still here. He's probably still out chasing gophers. Hello. You've come to see our room for rent? What's that? A fellow to see the room for rent, Grandpa. You show it to him, will you? Joe will be by for me in a minute. We're going swimming at Alice's, and I haven't even changed yet. Well, come on in. I'm Betty Morgan, and this is my grandfather. Now, how do you do, son? Uh, just arrived in town? Don't believe I've seen you around before. I just arrived. And your name? Derek. Derek. The empty room belonged to my brother, Bud. He's married now and lives upstate. Your brother? You knew your brother? <laughs> Did I know my brother? Just what are you implying, you freak? None of your business. That's a strange question to ask. Grandpa raised us both since we were kids after Mom and Dad died. I am sorry. I. It's just that I never knew any brothers or sisters. <laughs> Your mother and father decided to play it smart and avoid a lot of squabbles around the house. Oh, Grandpa. <laughs> I never knew my mother or father. Oh. Well, let's take a look at the room. And if you like it, you're welcome to stay. It's this way. I'll show it to you. Hey, I thought you were getting ready to go swimming. No, that can wait. Right in here, Derek. I hope you like the view. There's plenty of windows. <laughs> What's the matter? You act like you've never seen the inside of an automobile before. What is this? The gear shift. Where have you been all your life? The gear shift. Tell me what it is for. Now look, mister. I didn't offer you a ride to give no driving lesson. Tell me! Sure, sure. I didn't mean anything. Here's the clutch. When I push it in, I change gears. Low, second, and high. And to halt the vehicle? When I want to stop, I press the brake. Right here. And this? The starter and ignition switch. And to do a bat turn, I deploy the bat chute. Right chair. <laughs> and the fuel, what does it use? Are you kidding? Gasoline, of course. Here's the gas pedal right here. Hmm, it's about time I have the tank fill. I asked him where he was from, Grandpa, and he just said he was from very far away. He did, huh? Well, maybe he doesn't like to talk about where he's from. By the looks of his outfit, I'd say he's raised in a private school of some sort. Well, Grandpa, if he just got into town and can't pay the rent until he gets a job or something, would... Well, what do you say, young man? What do you think of the room? You will let me live here with you? Well, sure. That's why we had the sign up. That's why you came here, wasn't it? Not exactly, I... Derek, I was just talking to Grandpa, and... Well, if you don't have the rent money right away, that could wait until he gets a job, couldn't it, Grandpa? Mm, why, sure, that's all right with me, Betty. But then, if he doesn't like the room... I like it here very much. I would like to stay. Fine. I'll go out and take down the sign. Uh, you can use the phone to have your bags brought over. My bags? I have nothing else. No other clothes or anything? We were not allowed to. I mean, my uniform is all I have. Gosh, you've got to have more than that. Bud left some of his clothes in the closet, Grandpa. Couldn't Derek use some of them? Well, of course, my dear. Bud wouldn't mind a bit, I'm sure. Oh, golly, that's Joe. Put on whatever you like from the closet, Derek. I'll be right back. Make yourself at home. Hi there, Joe. Hi, Gramps. Betty, I'm afraid I can't make the swimming date. Not till later, anyway. 
Got a sudden assignment for the paper. Oh, gosh, what now, Joe? I have a list of folks to interview. Say they saw a new flying saucer last night. That sounds like it might take you all day. I hope not. I'll call you as soon as I get through, okay? Okay, Joe. Yeah, I guess a reporter's life can be pretty hectic. You never know when a new story will break. I was just thinking. Maybe Derek would like to go swimming, if you let us borrow the car. Betty, what is that? Uh, if you don't think Alice would mind. <laughs> you don't know Alice. I won't be able to keep him apart. Alice is such a skanky hoe. <laughs> What's going on in town anyway, mister? A convention or something? What? Well, those clothes you're wearing. I talked to a guy this morning who was wearing the same kind of outfit. Maybe the guy you're looking for, huh? You spoke to him? What did he tell you? Where did he go? Hey, what's the matter with you? Hey, take your hands off me. You will tell me what he said to you. Oh, why should I? Hey, who do you think you are anyway? Answer me or I destroy you. He came here with a dog tag. Wanted to know about the address and I told him how to find it. Where? Where did you send him? It was an address on Willow Crest Drive. 1243, I think. Tell me how to get there. Just drive down there about three blocks. That's, that's Willow Crest. 1243, it's only a few doors up. Thor's racking up quite the bone count. <laughs> you don't have to put the brake on so hard, Derek. That is, unless you want us to go through the windshield every time. I have never piloted a vehicle like this before. I will try again. Uh, this time, pull in there. That's Alice's house. Oh, much better. Wait, Betty. Yes, Derek. What is it? When I came to your place, it was because of... Yes? I had just arrived here. I, I did not know where else to go, but everything was so strange to me. I... I'm glad you came. So is Grandpa. Without any family or friends, you wouldn't like it at a hotel or any place like that. Come on, I hope Alice can dig up some swim trunks for you. Hi there. Who is the stranger? Uh, Joe couldn't make it, Alice. I talked Derek into coming along. Uh, Derek, this is Alice. Derek? Hey, I like that. Come on in, the water's fine. Well, we need a pair of swim trunks. I couldn't find any at my house. No problem at all. He can wear a pair of my father's. The folks are gone today, and so are the servants. We have the whole place to ourselves. Uh, where are the trunks, Alice? Hanging up right over there. They look a little large for you, Derek. Or maybe you better put them on with some clothespins, too, just in case. I guess it's safe to try them on anyway. Over there at the bathhouse. What was that? Don't worry, I'll get it. No problemo. Alice likes to go down. To the bottom of the pool. What? That is what I wanted to tell you about. The reason I came to your place. When I did not know where else to go. Heck, I thought it was a 50 cent piece at least. Why, that looks like who it is. It's Sparky's. Sparky's dog tag. Where on earth did you find it? When I first arrived, I was with some others. One of them destroyed a small creature. Later, I found that among the remains. You mean somebody killed Sparky? Oh, no, Derek, it can't be true. Why would anyone want to kill Sparky? Betty, I'm sorry. Tell me who did it, Derek. They are gone now. 
Only I remained. But I don't understand. Where is Bart? Will you take me to where it happened? I'll get dressed and come with you. No, Alice, please. You stay here. We'll see you later. Derek didn't come into town alone. If you're looking for him, he isn't here now. He and Betty, uh, that's my granddaughter, they went over to the Woodwards. Why don't you go on over there? No doubt they'd be glad to have you joined in the fun. Yes, fun. We could destroy things. <laughs> yes. How do I go there? The Woodwards are straight on down the street about three miles, just before you get to the park. Got the biggest house in the block down there. You can't miss it. Where are you fellas from, anyway? Don't believe I've seen uniforms like yours before. Hmm, military secret, eh? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Derek didn't say where he's from, either. No, well, let me keep you. You're probably anxious to see him. been here for a very long time. No. It was among these remains that I found the metal inscription. But this couldn't be Sparky. I know. He must have been here and his collar tag fell off. That's all. You are not familiar with the focusing disintegrator ray? The what? It projects an isolated beam which separates the molecules of living material in chain reaction. All but the solids, the skeletal braces. Oh, horrible. And you mean Sparky? But... Over there is what happened when the same beam was aimed at me. It missed and that is what is left. Good heavens, Derek. You've got to explain it to me. Why were they doing this? Where were they from? How, how did you... We... Betty, tell me. What is the most advanced form of transportation that you know? What do you mean? What's that got to do with it? Please, tell me, Betty. Well, airplanes. Jet airplanes, I guess. Why? And where do they go? From where to where? To anywhere in the world. And that's all? Where else is there to go? I should not have brought you here. Is it about a new secret weapon? Something you and the others invented and then they turned against you? It, it is something like that. I guess I should try to find someone I can explain it to. Maybe Professor Simpson at the college. Oh. He's head of the science department. He will... What is it, Derek? Betty, when you learn where I'm from, well... You may not understand, but I hope it will not make any difference between us, because... I don't care where you're from. I don't understand all this, but somehow I feel that I've always known you. That we've never been apart. I... Let us go to the professor you speak of. We have to pass the house first so I can change. What was that? Did you hear a sound? No. Only the wind. What sort of sound? Nothing. My imagination alarmed me. Come, let us be on our way. Well, hello. What can I do for you? You are alone? Could be. Where are the others? The ones who were with you? Why do you want to know that? Tell me where they are. Say, who are you anyway? Never mind. Just tell me. Well, they left here. They're gone. Where did they go? 
I think you better get out of here before I call the police. You will call no one. You will do as I say. That's what you think, mister. I said you will call no one. You know, I'll tell you what, of all the idiotic people that we've seen in all the idiotic movies we've had, I believe, as far as I'm concerned, that the dumbest of the people are in this movie. You know what I mean? I mean, dude shows up from another planet, clearly a strange freak. Well, let's just give him Bud's clothes, shall we? Let's just invite him in and go ahead and give him the clothes of our family. It was another time, my well, friend. Yeah, it was a time Without when... Without the strife of modern living. No, it was a time when brain power had no real meaning <laughs> and people did ridiculous stuff. I mean, the girl, you know, she goes ahead and, and does the nice thing and then she has to take a bone swim. You know what I mean? I don't know if you've ever done that. That is not as pleasant. You know, when you don't have have any, you know, really, really thin people, you know, unless you're like Michael Phelps or whatever, who I'm sure is pleased to be mentioned on this program. Probably, I'm sure the lawsuit is about to occur right now. Hey, by the way, coming up on our show tonight, an interview with Michael Phelps, everyone. That's right, Michael Phelps from Shyocton. That's uh, the, the Shyocton Phelps. But I'm saying most of the people who are super thin, you know what I mean? They're not as good at swimming because, well, right, like this, throw that in the water and see how much swimming goes on. You know, even with the dog's natural ability to swim, if you got, if you're just nothing but bone, you're going for a bone swim, baby, which means you're pretty much going down to the bottom. Do they make Speedos that small? They, uh, that is a Speedo, by the way. I don't know if you've seen it. Actually, this is, this will be the next thing in the next Olympics. This will be what they have to wear right here. They finally will have taken it down to this where they remove all their skin because, of course, the skin holds back some of the time you can't have as quick a time in the 200 medley if you have skin so next next olympics you're gonna actually they're just everybody be going for a bone swim they're gonna be michael phelps will be and he'll be just selling his skin on ebay you know speedo will actually come up with a new substance take the skin away it'll hold the uh hold the body in place without the need of that slow skin you're watching ned the dead's chiller theater we'll be right back a road that lies under northern skies toward the land of the midnight sun. It crosses the crest of the great northwest and it's known as the Al Can Run. And from Dawson's Creek with a task force fleet of the 57 line, we blaze the way for Chevrolet to conquer the Al Can Grind. Our engines were sealed, our tanks were sealed for once we were underway, Every mile of that ride would be certified by the seal of the AAA. Hamio Carrier 57. One ton panel 57. Dump body tandem axle. Fan panel body low cab forward. Five speed transmission tractor trailer. Tractor trailer powermatic. The trucks of the Task Force Fleet. A great new champion every weight, the mighty six, a great new eight, the Wally Trucks, so up to date the Chevrolet, the champion of them all. Fighting dust, fighting time, on that long northern climb. Alone against all nature's might, these trucks made by Chevy, light, medium, heavy, roared into the wilderness night. The lightning flashed, the hailstorm crashed, the rain turned the road to paste. We drove our band through that washed out land up into the Yukon waste. The night is gone and here's the dawn, the motor's humming clear and strong. The great new champs are pushing on for Chevrolet, the champion of them all. So we made our push through the Arctic bush on that ribbon of mountainous road, and we held our stride on that rugged ride in spite of the heavy load. Our 
automatic transmission locked in position, no shifting from drive to low, proving by test that Chevy is best wherever a truck can go. to span with our caravan, and the valleys were wide and deep. Though the way was hard, with hydraulic retard, we held where the grades were steep. Statistics say at the triple A, it's a 72-hour drive, but we roared down into Fairbanks town in less than 45. If you haul loads over all kinds of roads, Chevy trucks are number one. They're engineered best and proven by test, the champs of the Al Can Run. Test for 57 Chevrolet trucks are here. Welcome back to Chiller Theater. Hey, everybody, here we are, the old Chiller yeah, Theater, yeah, everybody. Yeah. Just here to talk to you in a different kind of a way that I don't normally talk to you. Because, you know, I've got a lot of different voices that I could be using, but hey, I always stick with the same one with uh, pretty much mixed results. So they've asked if I'd use a different voice this time to see if we can jack this show up a notch and try and make it something that a few more people are going to watch. So we felt like... Sorry about that. I know. Fine. I was I enjoying that. Now, hard, Top I can, 40 net. I could, right? yeah, I could go back to it if you want. I can have the mellifluous tones. Uh, there you go, baby. I've got a lot of that smoothness that I keep. Generally, the smooth part of me is the part under clothing. But every once in a while, I can bring out the velvety voice and treat you people to a little something special. That's why I'm here for you people. Oh, screw that. We're the sound effects carts. Right, that's, that's what right. I want to hear. That's exactly right. Hey, boy. <laughs> Maybe I can do... Uh, how about my dolomite? Can I do my dolomite? I'm going to cough after dolomite. You remember dolomite? Dolomite. Dolomite was uh, kind of from the Shaft era, the same kind of a thing. Dolomite was. Did you say action. era or area? No, it was the, <laughs> the era, the Shaft era. Oh, oh okay. The, uh, I got you. If you got Dolomite in the Shaft area, you're doing good. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Mm. But, uh, all right, and he's in this deal. I am Dolomite. I chained the lightning and put thunder his butt in jail. <laughs> but see, he didn't say but. He said the uh, another word for that. But jail. But. He didn't say but. Well, let me do it again. I am Dolomite. I chained the lightning and put thunder his butt in jail. See, now that, that is my Dolomite, and I do that uh, just another thing that I do, my friend. Nice. I do my, of course, my Mr. T. He boy. He boy. And then, and then, as you Which believe, actually, Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy doing, doing Mr. Mr. T. T. That exactly. But it's all good. No, it's all I'm, good. Yeah, I'm doing Eddie Murphy doing Mr. T. <laughs> or I can do, hey, Norton, the one that gets oh, you going. Oh, I can, how about if you and I, how about if I, no, I won't go anywhere near that. All right, <laughs> there you go. All right, everybody, we're going to go back and watch more television. And then who knows what's going to happen here. It's ugly. It's freaking. Humana, 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 humana. We'll be back before he even wakes up. Uh, hello. Hello, Gramps. This is Joe. Betty there? No, so she and Derek went out over to the Woodward's pool. Uh, you could probably reach her over there. Derek? Who's Derek? Oh, you haven't met him yet, have you? Uh, he rented Bud's old room this morning. Seems like a nice fellow. Oh? 
Well, the reason I called, I wanted to tell Betty I stumbled onto a double murder story that may keep me longer, but, well, after I get the story into the paper, I'll, I'll go on over to Alice's and see her there. A double murder, Joe? When was it? Where? We're not sure yet, Gramps. There's only a couple of skeletons. We'll know more when the coroner gets here. Well, gotta get busy now, Gramps. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Joe! Joe, I just found a note. Joe! Hello, hello. By golly, you missed them at the pool, huh? Sure am sorry. Uh, Betty left me a note. Now they've gone over to the college to see Professor Simpson. Professor Simpson. This is his office, but he hasn't come in yet. Well, let's wait for him in the faculty parking lot. It's just around the building. You may wait here if you like. No, thank you. We'll wait outside. Good morning, Hilda. Oh, good morning, Professor Simpson. Have the aptitude questionnaires come in? They're probably still in mimeographing. I'll go down and see if they're ready. Uh, that's Professor Simpson's office. The third door down. Uh, he's head of the science department. Well, that looks like Professor Simpson's car right there. He must be somewhere else on campus. We'd better go back to his office and wait. Hello? This is Simpson, science department. I... Put that down. What is the meaning of this? Do as I say. Who are you? Where is he? The one who came with information for you. Who? You are making some mistake. I am making no mistake. Where did he go? Out there? I don't know what you're talking about. You will speak to no one else. Why, you little... after you left. Ah! Oh! Oh, Derek! Oh, it's some kind of foolish joke. I'm not going to keep a job where this sort of thing goes on. I, I want to believe what I'm thinking isn't true, but... It was a focusing disintegrator. Then whoever killed Sparky... But you said they'd gone. For some reason, they want to stop me. Somehow we were traced here. I want you to get in your vehicle and go to a place where you will be safe. But how could they... <sighs> Grandpa. I left a note for Grandpa. They must have... Oh, Derek. I will go to your place. No, they may be waiting for you there. I can call Grandpa. They're kind of like Scully and Mulder all of a sudden. Yeah, except no cell phones. Look at that thing. Hello? Oh, Grandpa, thank heavens. Derek, he's all right. Betty, what is it, child? What's the matter? Grandpa, was somebody there? Somebody you told we were at the college? Oh, yes, the friend of Derek. Uh, did he find you okay? He's a murderer. He killed Professor Simpson, Grandpa. He's after Derek, and he's probably on the way back to the house right now. A murderer? But uh, are the police... Don't argue, Grandpa. Just get out of there. We're going to the City Hall Police Station right now. Meet us there. Don't worry about me, Betty. I'll leave right away. Goodbye, honey. I better call the police and let them know we're coming. With what weapons are they equipped? Well, guns, why? Guns that emit what? Bullets. What do you mean? Bullets. A centuries old invention against... Hello, operator. Give me the police department. Hurry. Thank you. 
thank you. Betty, tell me how to go there. I want you to go somewhere else where you will be safe. We're safer than the city hall. The police said they're going to have armed guards waiting for us on the front steps. I told them we'd be right there. Let's hurry. I spoke to my granddaughter. You're not getting any help from me. Did they return here? Tell me. I have no reason to harm your granddaughter. But if you do not tell me, well, I'll... You can kill Derek? Why should you care about him? Why shouldn't I? Why do you want to kill him? I... It is important only that he leave here. That I return him to where he belongs. And where is that? From where he escaped. I need not harm anyone if you tell me where he is. If you do not, there will be many deaths, beginning with you, now. He's not here, he's in the center of the city. Where? Take me there. You will pilot the vehicle. Go. Be swift. Alice? Betty? Anybody here? You think the tip might have been a phony, Mac? Don't think so, Harry. The girl who called seemed to know what she was talking about. Another call, Mac. Joe Rogers, reporter on the Daily News. He's on the way over. Found another skeleton. Only this time at the bottom of a swimming pool. The city hall is just up ahead in the next block. Oh, I hope Grandpa's there waiting for us safe and sound. What are you doing? Be silent. Continue ahead. You stay here in the car. You'll be safe. He's after me, not you. Are those weapons emitting bullets? Man, they look more like scratches in the film. came from Alice's. There was a skeleton in the pool. Alice? I... Oh, no! We came to meet Grandpa. The murderer came in the car with him. What? But how did you get mixed up in this? Since he killed Sparky out by the old mine. He's an insane killer, Joe. And he forced Gramps to drive here? Where is Gramps? Is he okay? Yes, he's... Oh, there he is, trying to get across the street. You stay put. I'll go over and help him across. We better stop the movie so Gramps has a chance of making it. <laughs> what are you doing down here? Go into the building. That is the safest place. Look. Here on the sidewalk, drops of blood. Betty. Go into the building. 
Derek! <gasps> Give me the weapon you have, Derek. Slowly. One sudden move and I slay you both. Ned, Haney, I want some color movies or I slay you both. Derek? Derek, do as he says. of surgery to remove the metal pellets from my flesh. That is not possible. Yes, we must. We must do as he says. I know a doctor's office. We'll take him there. She is very wise. Now go! You know, times are a lot different in the... Oh, I forgot to start it with... Hey, everybody! There we go. Sorry, that was freakish. You know, times were a lot different in the old days. You know, where you would go and like Boy Scouts were going to help people cross the street and whatever. Would you come up to like a 62-year-old dude and ask him to, for help crossing the street? Say something funny or I'll slay you. Yeah, fine. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, like I said, 62-year-old dude and you go ask him if he needs help crossing the street. You know, times have really changed. Do you know that? They really have. I mean, it used to be where we thought that people in the 60s were old. <laughs> of course, kids, you probably still think people in the 60s are old, don't you? It's all relative, isn't it? You know what I mean? Because I remember, so let's say you're watching this show right now and you're, let's say, 17, right? You know, 60 to you would be like uh, ancient still, you think? I'm thinking, right? Yeah, like, you know, except that the real fact of the matter is, is nowadays people who are 60, A, they're all still working. B, none of them really need help crossing the street. Now, that's kind of like if you're maybe 130 or what something. Did, what like do they say? 60 is the new 30? <laughs> the new 30. Or, I wish it were. I wish it were because I'd be or, 20 and I'd be feeling good, baby. I would be all ready to roll, my friend. Because I'll tell you, nobody looks at me and thinks that little dude's ready to roll. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> they think, I think he could roll, you know, but I don't think he's ready think to roll. Gave him a push. That's right. Yeah, look at him roll. <laughs> You're watching Ned the Dead's Chiller Theater. We'll be right back. Talkie operator, machine gunner, Tiger Joe, rugged, powerful, ready for battle. You command Tiger Joe with remote control. Stop. Back. You breach load Tiger Joe and fire. Battery powered, the biggest tank of all, Tiger Joe, sold at food markets only. Welcome back to Chiller Theater. Hey everybody, what do you say here at uh, Chiller Theater? Can I talk about Get Smarter, is that too old? Is well, that too old for well, you? No, there was a newer do version of it too, movie? remember? Yes. So, yeah, there was that With movie. Steve so, yeah. Carell. Yeah, right. So, TV you can, show you yeah. don't watch. So, yes, you can. Right. <laughs> I have no idea who that is, but sure. No, if you want to, because that means even the young folks will understand what you're talking about. Well, Go I, ahead. I was excited to find out that King Moody, who plays the alien space captain, was on Get Smart as Starker. Starker. Remember Starker? Get Smart. I don't. I Bernie don't Capel, who was the doctor yes, and the love I boat. I certainly remember that. Was love Siegfried, love the evil chaos agent. Love and Starker love was his henchman. Was Bernie was Starker? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, He's actually, it's funny because uh, Get Smart, thankfully, the movie came up to refresh my memory. That was one of those shows that was starting to leave my uh, leave my memory banks. Oh. Certain shows will always stay. The Addams Family, The Munsters, those will always stay. But Get Smart was starting to... Yeah. Uh, starting Me, to I forgot out. the third grade. Oh, I know. Right, Mrs. Exactly. Schlude's class. In many ways, you're still in the third grade. Gone. Next thing I knew, he was trying to fire out the window at Betty and Derrick. I swerved the car and... See, where is Betty? 
That's funny. She must be around someplace. But the car's gone. They must have left without me. Well, don't worry, Gramps. You'll get an escort home. I'm going to phone the story into the paper and then drive out to the old mine Betty mentioned. The old mine? What's out there? I don't know. That's where she said Sparky was killed by the guy. Sparky, our dog? She didn't tell me about that. Hey, Mac, over here. Blood spots on the sidewalk. And where's that car that was parked here? That's it. That's how the killer got away. In our car? Then Betty and Derek, they must have been kidnapped. You've got to do something. You've got to find them. This is it, Derek. That's Dr. Brandt there. He looks like he's leaving. Stop him. Block his path. You know, there are backseat drivers. Yeah, but he's a backseat bully. What a jerk. Is there some emergency? I have a house call to make. Office hours don't begin for another hour. Go inside, all of you. I say, what is this? He's holding a gun on us, Dr. Brandt. We had to bring him here. He wants bullets removed. I see. I'm afraid I cannot be of any help. You will need hospital facilities for anything else. Be silent and get inside. You will remove the pellets here, now. Leave these people alone, Thor. Where is our ship? I will take you there. No, it is gone. Do as I say. Derek, please. Doctor, you must try. down here. I will prepare an anesthetic. The pain will be great. I will not be drugged. You will simply remove the pellets. Both of you, sit there. I shall keep you covered. Take heed. One treacherous move and they pay with their lives. Now proceed. All right, all right, young man. Don't get your duct tape in a bunch. <laughs> been searching for me. It must have been important for you to have the gargana to be raised here. You could not be allowed to run free. But the specimen reaction was negative. It was verified positive after you escaped. The captain should have let me kill you when I had a chance. And why didn't he? I saw him stop you when you fired at me. Because... Because he just learned that that you are the son of our leader. not to be killed, why did you fire at me in the city? Your life or death was put in my hands. A traitor does not deserve to be our next leader. The only reason you do not fire now is to force attention to your wounds. When that is done... Proceed! Septic must be applied to your wounds, and you will need bandages. I'll get them. I'll find 
behind you. You you cannot get away. Oh, I was terrified he'd see us before we got out of there. He may yet. Get in. I will take you back to the police. In his present condition, he cannot remain conscious long. By the time we return with the police, he should be completely helpless. Derek, what was he talking about? The guard gone to be raised here, and, and you, the son of the leader. You said you didn't know your father. I did not know of the things he said. I thought they'd gone. I wanted to forget them forever. And there's something he did forget. Yeah, that psycho nut job with the scooch gun. Yeah, he better stop moaning and start rolling. But now I know. They plan to return. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm going with you. Where? To the old mine shaft. How did you hear about that? The old fellow inside. He's been telling us everything he can think of. Mentioned that's where you were going. Okay, hop in. Maybe something will turn up out there. <laughs> You're in here? I know you are. I'll find you. You know, a lot has changed since they made this movie. And one thing we don't do anymore is everybody get in and out of the same side of the car. Yeah, that's kind of... Give me that. <laughs> My nurse, Miss Moss. She'll be arriving for office hours. I can hear you breathing. You, you cannot escape me. I'll find you. I'll find you. I'll find you. I'll find you. <laughs> I think so. Thor's a few gargan short of a herd, don't you think? <laughs> I've reached you. This is Dr. Brandt. Where are you, doctor? There's an emergency patient here. I've done all I can. Listen, Miss Moss. He's a murderer. He held hostages at gunpoint to force me to remove bullets. We were fortunate in escaping. You must get out of there. A murderer? We Did she just say murderer? So, maybe she's a noise from New Jersey. <laughs> You're sending the police, but if you treated him, he could revive at any moment. Y yes, Doctor. Uh, I'll leave immediately. You will come with me. Put that down. Miss Moss, Miss Moss, what is it? Drop it, I said. What do you want? You will help me to escape. Go out. my car get in you will take me where i say if you disobey you will be killed the police are on 
the way, Dr. Brand. They... It's no use. I was too late. They're gone. Thor has escaped? But how could he? You said he would be helpless that... Without aid. But my nurse, she didn't know. She bandaged him. Gave him an injection. He revived. Oh, no. Well, we've got to tell the police. They might be able to do something. I'll tell them. I'll tell them what happened. him eventually. It is what I know is coming here. The Gargan. They are small when young, but they can attain the, the size of this building in no more than a day. But can't you stop them? The only chance is to duplicate the operation of the disintegrator. How can that be done? The men of science here might be able to do it if they could get Thor's as a model. If only there is enough time. You know, I don't get this guy. Animals are humans. He just seems to like killing. There's more to it than that, Joe. There's something behind this, something we don't understand. The weapon he uses, it's unheard of. Blasting flesh right off the bones. Look at that tree over there. Used it for target practice by the looks of it. I don't know. Let's take a look in the old cave. to tell me. It is not far now. But you can't escape. The police will find you. Possibly they will. But barricaded in the mouth of a cave with you as hostage and me with this... How long do you think you can hold out that way? Long enough. There will not be too long to wait. Hey! Bring your flash bulbs up here. This tunnel is black as pitch. Okay, I'll be right up. Do not value your life. He's getting away. Follow him. No. Dare refuse. So the director says to the camera guy, when she falls out of the car, let's speed it up so it looks like we're going really fast. Because that won't look stupid at all. <laughs> It's over. It was like a nightmare. I, I wish it was over. Well, what do you mean? Back in the cave where he shot at me. Some kind of man-eating monster. Poor Mac, the guy I was with. I could hear the thing tearing him apart. He was dead in a few seconds. Oh, how horrible. 
What could it have been? I don't know. But whatever it is, I'm afraid the nightmare has just begun. Hey, everybody, it's Chili Theater. Oh. oh, that just chills me. You know, I remember as a kid, I ca captured a bunch of crayfish one time, too, and I went down to the small cave near my house, and uh, I, I, they got them in there, and then all I heard in my sleep that night was... That horrible sound of the, the the lone crayfish, you know. And if you're if life is a crayfish, can you imagine life as a crayfish? Because let's say that you know that people don't exactly like you, others, right? And you figure the crayfish. I don't know that the crayfish has a lot of other friends in the uh, animal or vegetable kingdom or whatever. I think they're vegetables, whatever they are. But <laughs> let's say then. So really, you're, you're really left to your own devices. Nobody really likes you, but you also have pincher hands which makes life so much worse because no one else likes you, so you're left to your own devices, yet you have pincher hands. So therefore, you know what I'm saying here, it's really very hard to, to exist in life with pincher hands because let's say, for yeah. instance, that I wish to console myself, if you know what I mean. Pincher hands don't make that a lot easier, oh. you know what I'm saying? Oh. So imagine being some creature that people don't really like and having pincher hands. It's not easy. No, it isn't. And I mean, I think we don't think often enough about the, the trials and tribulations of other members of the animal kingdom. We should start a cause. Let's, let's go yes. do, let's do that now. We'll have a telethon. All right, here we go. You're watching Chiller Theater. We'll be right back. Wonderful show. It had everything. Kathy, I'm not saying it wasn't a wonderful show. It was great, but they just missed an opportunity for a for a, a classic piece of music. That's all. Well, what was that, Daddy? Oh, I had a pretty good idea there. I, I thought just before the intermission, uh, the, the the maestro could have raised his baton and given a downbeat to the timpani. See, and then the violin, <laughs> and then the trumpets. <laughs> Then a hundred voice choral group sings. Most any cereal is fine with me. As long as you spell it P O S T. Cause all post cereals happen to be. Just a little better. A little bit better. <laughs> a little bit better than any other cereal happens to be. If you want to prove it to yourselves, folks, try Post Toasties. I know you'll love them. Good night. Welcome back to Chiller Theater. You're thinking, where did that come from? I don't know either. What do you got there? Foreshadowing, Are my you, friend. All right, let's foreshadow. All right, then. I love the foreshadowing, as you know. It's much, uh, anything with four in front of it four. is awfully nice. You know, it's neat that foreshadowing, that the four would actually come at the beginning of the word. Because therefore, because four yeah. means in front, doesn't it? Like four, doesn't it? But why? F O R E means kind of in front. Because the number four doesn't come first. I know, but then therefore, why four. would it be at the back? I prefer yeah. foreshadowing or four, you know, there four are other knowledge. things. Foreknowledging, yes. there are, right. The uh, four mention four play four is another one that. Uh, <laughs> whoa, what's going on? Yeah, the dudes. If you saw Which what we came see, up with that? no, if you saw what we see right here at this time of night, here's four guys sitting at a table, all ready to pass right out, <laughs> going, "What did we ever think we wanted to do this for?" And then every once in a while, one of them will go. Foreplay. <laughs> That's exactly. Hear him laugh. That's exactly what happened in this case. He went foreplay. Then the others went. <laughs> and they looked at each other. They're all just whacked. They just want to go home. That was very nicely done. That's exactly what happened, isn't it? They, it's sad. It is sad, but true. Every now and then they catch something. They do, and they already make it up themselves. They're not funny enough. Let's do our own. <laughs> We're going to go on them now. The man guilty of these strange killings now lies mute in confinement at General Hospital where he is being treated for minor injuries. Authorities plan to transfer him to city jail tonight. The fantastic murder weapon he used has not been located. Mystery still surrounds the disappearance of a man-eating beast said to have been in an abandoned mine shaft outside the city limits. 
These newsreel shots were made immediately after the city police surrounded the cave and found it completely empty. Evidence in the cave appeared to confirm the report that a monster of some sort had been shackled there but had somehow attained strength enough to pull itself loose and escape. Groups of armed volunteers have set out in search of the creature, hoping to track it down and destroy it. Meanwhile... Wow, what a big day in the old newsroom. I know, breaking news has been breaking all over the place. Four crash just below here. If that disintegrator is down there, I'm going to find it. Derek, I just thought. The monster that escaped from the cave. It must have been there at the same time we were. What I can't figure out is... Why did it escape when it did? Why not sooner? It would not have been large enough, but the man it consumed increased its growth rate. Then... How big would it be now? You know, it seems to me if this happened today, we'd be grinding those gargan up into little blue pills so we can make things grow too. Who says we haven't, my friend? <laughs> Who says we haven't? There is no telling. You stay here. Keep the door closed. like livestock, parented by the most perfect specimens of our race. If you become ill, you are put to death, as are the old. You won't be going back ever, will you? I shall make the earth my home, and I shall never, never leave it.
have been damaged somehow when Thor was thrown in the crash. You said that that thing would keep growing. If it does, what can stop it from wrecking the city? And... I may be able to repair the damaged part of the disintegrator. If I can, we will stop the Gargan and give the Earth a weapon against invasion as well. If only I can get it to work. exhausted he fell sound asleep with all his clothes on. My grandpa loves his naps. He's so nap happy. <laughs> Do you think you can fix it, Derek? I have found the damaged part. Such a little thing. That's what she said. That's what they always say. And yet it has the power to destroy as it does. It is worthless. Unless I can figure out an energy substitute. Maybe it won't come into the city, Derek. It will come to the city. For more food, if nothing else. This is Johnson at Station 86. Out by the hills, due northeast, there's some kind of a monster. It suddenly bobbed up and seemed to touch the sky. I have not been drinking. No, I can't see it now. It must be behind the hills, but I'm getting out of here. Hey, buddy, you forgot something. There you go. The few remaining survivors of the search party that was attacked report that the beast they encountered was many times the size they expected, indicating that the monster has some strange power of rapid growth. An exact description was, we have a bulletin just received. According to a report not yet confirmed, a beast of seemingly gigantic proportions has been sighted lurking in the hills due northeast of town. City officials have called for military help. Planes and troops are expected to arrive within the next two hours. Meanwhile, citizens should take refuge in places of safety. Cellars, bomb shelters, as directed by civil defense administrators. I repeat. Derek, they say it's coming. It has grown. It's just northeast of town. I'd better wake up Grandpa. We'll all go down to the cellar. You go there with him. There is a chance I can do something yet. What? What are you looking at? Those wires. Going from pole to pole. They carry the source of energy used for illumination and power in the homes. Yes, electricity. And the wires are spread throughout the city, are they not? You mean you might be able to make the disintegrator work by hooking it to... Possibly. If the power were great enough. It's the only chance, so I've got to try it. I can help, Derek. I'm going with you. Oh, uh, what's going on? Uh, what's all the commotion about? Grandpa, Derek and I are going out to the edge of town. Wait for us here. First, I must put the disintegrator back together and then find proper tools. I can load the car with every tool we have in the garage. Take Gramps. He's the biggest tool you got. <laughs> All right, then. Let us go. Hey, everybody, it's Jiller the Eater. Gargan. <laughs> Gargan. <laughs> it's Gargan time. It's Gargan like. <laughs> it, oh, oh, Gargan. <gasps> It's all about Gargan. Oh, oh. You know that Gargan is the guy I like. I oh. like him because he feels so good. He is that Gargan. He gives you wood. Oh. He oh, so so sorry, I didn't mean that. I meant that he delivers lumber from the area by the cave. That's what I'm Whoa. saying there. Sorry about that. You know, I'll tell you what, I think I could have made it as a lounge singer. What do you think, guys? Yeah. You think so? Look, that woke him up, see? They're like, uh-oh, where's he going with this? Because it usually uh -oh. ends up bad. When Ned starts singing, oh. they hate it, too. Oh, it's look like, out. Oh, we told him not to sing. The little one's going for the gong. That's right. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Boom. You're watching Ned the Dead's Chiller Theater. We'll be right back.
Would you like to have one, Mrs. Olsen? Oh, Arthur, I'd love one. You take Arthur, too, while you're at it. He's always barking about my coffee. Now, honey, all I said was... I don't make good coffee. No, no, no. Mrs. Olsen, oh, I'm afraid he's right. Yeah, good coffee's no problem. If you use a coffee with better flavor. Here, now you try Folgers. It's like I've tried them all. Huh? Folgers is different. It's mountain grown coffee. Mountain grown? Yeah, that's the best coffee. The richest kind. Especially the way Folgers blends it. Honey, why don't you try it? Okay. Right now. You know, this Folgers really is great coffee. Really like it? Honey. Folgers is this man's best friend. <laughs> Try Folgers, the mountain-grown coffee. Mountain-grown for better flavor. Welcome back to Chillin' Theater. Hello, <laughs> I love you. I'm here to share my love with you. Sorry, I know, I know, I know, I know. You know what? I'll tell you what I want to say, because you guys have followed my life and stuff like that somewhat. I've now quit smoking for two and a half months. Okay, hey. two and a half months. And listen to the voice. Listen, do that again. I love that. You know, hey, hey uh, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. And, you know, you look like you hate really want to put one in there. And you know what, though? What I've noticed is in two and a half months, I can really smoothly give you love. Oh. That's it. Look at that. How that's happening. How are the old taste buds? Oh. Are things tasting well, you better? You know what I've discovered is that after smoking as long as I did, I really like the things tasted in the bad, stinky smoke way. And now I don't like them as much. <laughs> but I still eat as you can tell, because I'm growing exponentially. But once again, feeling healthier and singing that much better. What happened? Did you get caught up there? You getting I'm gorgonated? I'm just trying to find some room. <laughs> with Betty. What makes you think Betty's in the cellar? She's out somewhere with Derek again. Everybody's supposed to take shelter. The monster from the cave, it's approaching the town. Huh? What? Huh? Then that's where they must have gone, those crazy kids. Joe, we've got to try and find them. You mean they... Come on, then, let's go. generating plant. Hurry! Generating plant? Hello? Please listen to me. You must do as I say. The monster is coming towards the town. I'm at North Ridge Road. We have a weapon here that might be able to stop it if we can connect it to the power lines. Who is this? I'll have to check with... You have to believe me. There's no time to check with anybody. Looks like him. Derek is climbing down a pole. And look what's coming. We're not going to make it in time. <laughs> Restore the power. It is ready. Hello? Turn the power back on. Okay. It is not enough. It is not enough power. Can you boost the power? I'll try to speed up the generators. Derek seems to have some kind of weapon, but it's not doing anything. <laughs> if only there were more power, Betty. 
already. Is there any way to generate more power? We've got to have more. I could join in more circuits, but it may blow off the line. Try anything. It's our only chance. over to the scientists now. It is too late. You mean they're coming? Already? Your people are here for you. I must leave. They will take care of you. But, Derek, you promised. You said... I know what I must do. You must not interfere. Betty, thank heavens you're all right. has indeed made you forget many things. We are the supreme race. We have the supreme weapons. We use duct tape on our astro suits. Somehow I feel that I've always known you, but we've never been apart. You are the son of our leader. You won't be going back ever. get a weapon like that. It makes me think of what the killer used. It is. The same thing. But who is he? Where did he come from anyway? In some place none of us has ever heard of before, Joe. What do you mean? Clear from another planet. Far out in space. Hey, wait a minute. Betty, this is no time to be joking. I'm not joking. Where do you think the monster came from? And the man who was doing all the killing and, and the unheard of weapon he used. But how did they... They came in a, a spaceship of some sort. Whatever those people told you they saw last night. The flying saucer? And I thought those people were seeing things. They weren't. Derek looked into the sky just before he left here. Somehow, he could tell more on the way. There's our car. you to take me somewhere in your vehicle. What makes you think I will? You refuse to take me? That's right. I'm staying right here. You will do as I say. Oh, no, Derek, this isn't you. Do not interfere, Betty. I beg you. Get in. Take me to where they are keeping the prisoner. The killer? He's a general hospital, but... Then take me there. Joe, don't the disintegrator it won't... Betty! Trust me, Betty. Trust me. <laughs> Derek seemed like such a nice fellow. Grandpa... He promised me something. He promised he would never leave. That he would never go back. I don't believe he wants to break his promise to me. I'm not going to let him. What can you do about it, honey? I think I know where he's going. Out by the old mine. I want to go there. I want to see him once more. He's hurt you enough, Betty. Grandpa, please let me go. I must. The prisoner is 
in this building. It looks like they haven't transferred him to city jail yet. What are you planning to do? Never mind. Just get out of the car and walk in front of me. take the prisoner. Get their guns. Hand them to me. Now get in. You face the wall. Keep your hands above your heads. was stupid, Thor. Very stupid. But that is over. We are returning to meet the ships. Together. Why do you let them live? Kill them! There is no need. They will be dead soon enough, along with everything else on this planet. Go! Look! That's what he meant! of an alien source are approaching from the sky. Radio contact has been attempted but cannot be established. Instructions are to prepare for an attack by an unknown enemy. Hey everybody, it's old Chiller Theater. What do you think, my friend? Well, you know, if there was a Gargan attack in this day and age, I believe the TV meteorologists would be all over it. Why? You'd want the weather guy because you need the radar, you know, and the graphics. <laughs> cool, cool graphics. I think so. And most of the uh, weather guys also have a big uh, pool of drawn butter nearby. Ooh. If you know what I mean? Because I think There's the, uh, butter. did you know that? I mean, most of butter. the weather guys on television, they're all about having butter near them. I mean, they, uh, they utilize butter in the course of their daily lives in ways that normal humans don't. Did you know that? Butter. No, they do. They use it as a, it's not just something for dining. It can also be, I think they have a small butter bath that they enjoy. I mean, it's just a little different. You know what I mean? Well, I look at the Gorgon and I'm thinking of butter right now. Drawn butter mm. and a little delicious Gorgon. Who doesn't like the ah, meat, the ah, sweet, ah, the sweet ah, meat of the Gorgon? Ah, I think ah, we all love it. Go now. Ah, have it taken care of. Go. Ah, ah. You're watching Ned the Dead's Chiller Theater. We'll be right back. Oh, Chatty Cathy, oh, Chatty Cathy, all the tell's famous talking down. We pull the rings, and you say 11 different things. Let's play house. Please change my dress. We can change our dresses now, goodness knows. Now you've got a wardrobe full of pretty clothes. For nursery school, you're crisp and cool. For summer, there's a playtime set. In winter, brr, your collar's first. In a coat as cute as you can get. I love you. You love your mama. And they love you sleepy time pajamas. Just pull the ring. You never know what she'll say next. Tell me a story. The only story now left to tell is a Chatty Cathy's made by Mattel. You'll find Chatty Cathy and her costume sets wherever toys are sold. You can tell it's Mattel, it's swell. Welcome back to Chiller Theater. Just the car. Betty, Gramps, what are you doing here? 
Why do you concern yourself with them? Destroy them! Why, Thor? They cannot change what is going to happen. What is going to happen, Derek? You must understand. Death must come to all. Sooner to some, later to others. The guide ship is about to land. We must go to meet it. Your promise, Derek. Don't you remember your promise? I have not forgotten it. Screwdrive, don't bother me. Screwdrive, just fly away. We call that the guide ship. And it looks like there are a hundred more still in the sky. What are they going to do? Derek told me. The other ships are loaded with thousands of those horrible creatures, like the one Derek killed today. Why are they bringing them here? To raise for food, a safe distance from their own people. And they don't care what happens to us? Derek cared. He wanted to make the Earth his home. He promised he would never leave. I would have used the disintegrator on them, but it will not function without energy supply. It was damaged when you crashed. I had to bluff with it. It is just as well. They will be the first victims of the Gargan herds. So you were able to bring him back, Thor. He brought me. I am sorry I acted the way I did. I am ready to take my punishment. There will be no punishment, my son. You are my father? I am. I have watched your progress since you were born. You have excelled in all things. I was most disappointed to learn that you were deserted. You said the space captain had been a Ronald McDonald? Yeah, uh, one of the first ones. Why? Well, because this guy could have been the Hamburglar. <laughs> I came this trip hoping I would find you had returned. Has what I have done not disqualified me? Am I still to... You are back. That is all that matters. Your mistakes were made because of that book. It blurred your mind, but only temporarily. How is it you are able to leave the planet? Will not the government structure collapse in your absence? We will return immediately, as soon as the Gargans are unloaded from the fleet of ships. The people are unaware that I am gone. Yes, we must leave quickly. If your absence were discovered, it would likely spark the beginning of a revolution. I am not the only one who had that book, Father. Yes, I know. And you will help in tracking down others who may have such books. Yes, I... I see the fleet is approaching. They are flying from radio signals from the guide ship, are they not? Let me be the one to direct them in for landing. Captain, are the ships close enough to receive the landing signals? Momentarily, but... Then you... go below, Derek. You will bring them in. went in first and closed the entrance way. Whatever's in the sky, they're getting mighty close. Derek has some plan. He's not doing what they want him to, I'm sure. Master control to fleet. Master control to fleet. Increase speed. Set flight pattern to minus point zero eight. Increase speed. Open this hatch at once. The ships seem to be converging and increasing their speed. They cannot land. He does not plan to have them land, but crash. They're coming right at us. Derek's doing it. That's what he planned. But he's inside there. He'll be killed too. Get down inside the cave. My son, please think of what you are doing. Turn the ships around before it is too late. Hold course steady.
the earth my home, and I shall never, never leave it. It's Cheller Theater. What do you think, everyone? Ooh. Oh, the Gorgon. Always great. Oh, I know what a Gorgon. Love that. Love the old stuff. I do, too. They got nothing to work with, but they make nothing work. I love the old stuff. That's yes. one thing about me. A little strange. You know, a lot of guys like the young <laughs> stuff. I, on the other hand, I like the old stuff. The old <laughs> movies, you know. I don't know where that was. I didn't mean it like that. I really didn't. I want you to know, I was sort of, but not really. Once that came out, I thought, oh, that didn't sound that great. So we'd like to take that back and just go ahead and thank you for coming and enjoying. Hey, we want to thank our sponsors, Van Vrede's, king of all stores. You know, thank you very much for being here for local television. Doc Moreau, you're a fine human. You know what I mean? Thanks to Inga, the prop mistress, for her fantastic work in creating this and other fine things we use on this show. And thanks to our Cracker Jack crew for making this week as special as they can. <laughs> I love them for that. All I need to say is foreplay, my friend. All right, everybody, oh. we're out of here. We love you. Oh, what? Thanks for watching Ned the Dead and Doc Moreau. Remember to check out their stuff at nedthedead.com.